in waters like this is not normal. And that is not even the craziest thing that I saw this morning. Scientists have created a hamster plant hybrid capable of photosynthesis. And I'm actually not joking. So as of this year, researchers at the University of Tokyo have combined chloroplasts with animal cells, enabling the cells to harness energy from sunlight. Now this technology could be useful in artificial tissue engineering and proliferating tissues in oxygen lacking environments. If that sounds like goobly gut to you, and if you don't understand just how huge of a discovery this is, scientists have been trying to make photosynthesis happen in animals since the 1970s. It's been long known that chloroplasts retain their photosynthetic activities even after being separated from the plant, so therefore a lot of researchers have tried to incorporate these into the cells of other species. However, these incorporations could only be maintained for a couple of hours and the analysis of their activities kind of remained unconfirmed. So until now, inserting energy making chloroplasts into mammal cells has been considered impossible. Researchers thought chloroplasts would be digested by the animal cells within hours after being introduced. However, this study found that chloroplasts continue to perform photosynthesis for up to two days. So the chloroplast in question was taken from red algae and incorporated into a hamster. And using several imaging microscopy techniques, researchers confirmed the electron transport of photosynthetic activity by using pulses of light. We have a direct quote. As far as we know, this is the first reported detection of photosynthetic electron transport in chloroplasts implanted in animal cells. Which, oh my gosh, do you understand like how cool this is? If not, we're gonna talk science for a moment, we're gonna get really technical, and we're gonna see if uh, taking biology in high school is gonna help me here. So we're gonna break it down folks. When the chloroplasts merged, researchers noticed that hamster cells grew faster than usual. This enhanced cell growth suggests that chloroplasts could have served as carbon source or fuel for the cells. However, the exchange of substances between chloroplasts and mitochondria remains unclear, but like imagine what the future could hold if we could do this. Okay, cat fans, this next one is for you and for me. <laughs> in Central and South America, a new species of cat has been identified. And this cute little critter, dubbed the Clouded Tiger Cat, looks almost like a cartoon drawn to be particularly adorable. Like I squealed. Look at those eyes. They're like so Pixar-esque, if you're asking me. And well, you're here. So this mountain dwelling bundle of adorableness is about the size of a house cat. They tend to hang out in higher elevations in Peru, Colombia, and Costa Rica. It is particularly elusive and excellent at climbing trees and catching critters. So the discovery and subsequently published range was made by a stellar team of researchers working with the Tiger Cats Conservation Initiative and several universities throughout South America. But like, isn't it so cute? <laughs> In January of this year, scientists found an incredible example of speciation in a species of migratory birds, the Kentish plover. So around the late 1800s, scientists noticed that a subsection of this species began ceasing migration back and forth from the Mediterranean shores to Sri Lanka, instead choosing to stay around southern India. Well, recent genetic analysis has revealed that after nearly 150 years, the two groups have become genetically distinct from one another, making the subspecies a truly different species. So the researchers named this cute little shorebird, the Hanuman plover, after the god Hanuman who built a bridge between Sri Lanka and India, which that's the habitat of the species. So cool, right? Okay, let's see if I can pronounce this next species correctly because I don't believe they have a common name yet because they're really new. Eunectes akayima. I tried. So it's always particularly surprising when a new species of large creatures are identified, unlike all the little guys I've been chatting about before this. And this year, this 20 foot long Amazonian snake became one of the most notable megafauna species to make a new species list. So these apex predators that slither around the Amazon in Ecuador are massively important to the environment, keeping an inordinate amount of creatures regulated by their prey habits. So to determine genetic distinctions between this anaconda and others in the region, researchers spent decades going through the Amazon to find species to take samples from. And this year, results showcase just how genetically different this small population of anaconda was from other similar looking species. So in the published article describing this new whole thing, the research authors suggest that this genetic difference was a result of recent speciation, meaning that these very recently diverged from their closest relative to become their own species. And that's enough snake talk before I run. 
In Tanzania, in March of this year, a team of scientists collected insect specimens from the Magombera Nature Reserve and found several new creatures that had never been catalogued. These mountain dwelling insects are wildly important for the ecology of the area, serving as decomposers of decaying material in the region. So, because of their influence, the habitat of the region has better soil fertility and water retention. So, this discovery has led to a better understanding of overall millipede behavior. Before this research, the undisturbed rainforest floor was considered to to be the preferred habitat of millipede species. But these critters, however, were found crawling around large vines, called lianas, in high altitude regions. And though it's still kind of speculative to say, this research may lead to far more discoveries in the millipede group, since scientists now better know where to look for them. And I now better know where to look away. When a hunter captured a strange looking whale in Greenland back in the 1980s, he saved its unusual skull. The puzzling bone didn't precisely resemble any known thing. Its teeth were spiraling in odd directions, and along its top jaw were tiny tusks that stuck out almost horizontally. What's more, when the hunter took the life of this creature, he took the lives of two others that looked like it, with solid grey skin, narwhal like tails, and beluga like flippers. Scientists long suspected that these creatures were hybrids, and it wasn't until 2019 when researchers took a DNA sample from the bone and came to a conclusion. The skull belonged to a first generation narluca, which is a cross between a narwhal and a beluga whale. So far, the skull and the hunting anecdote are the only evidence of narlucas in the wild, which is not nearly enough to designate the hybrid as its own species. But in recent years, scientists have been speculating the phenomenon could happen again. In 2016, a narwhal in the St. Lawrence River in Canada started swimming along a pod of belugas. They seemingly adopted the lone narwhal, even though the two species don't typically interact. In 2022, when the narwhal was old enough to reproduce, some began to suggest the out of place animal might mate with a beluga and produce narluga calves. If the narwhal fits in well enough with the male belugas, he might join an alliance with them and collectively court female whales. When it comes to reproduction, dolphins may be among the least discriminatory creatures on the planet. They frequently mate with other species, and they seem especially open minded, at least according to Jason Biddle. He said this in 2019, he's an expert on the subject. Well, in a 2016 study, researchers documented 20 cases of dolphin hybrids, and only seven of them occurred in captivity. These interspecies dalliances represented 18 unique pairings of the species, and most of these were not closely related. Only two of the couplings belonged to the same genus. In fact, dolphins appear to be so flexible about which species they breed with that researchers suggest that hybrid dolphins might be far more numerous than we might assume. And from just a quick glimpse of a dolphin in the wild, it might not be easy to tell that it's a hybrid. In general, it's likely that many living hybrids seen in the wild are not recognized as such. But there's a couple of notable individuals. So there's a rare hybrid of a rough toothed dolphin and a melon headed whale that appeared near Hawaii in 2018, and a creature that appeared to be part bottlenose and part striped dolphin was spotted off the coast of England last August, and it was thought to be a first ever sighting for the United Kingdom. Now, These hybrid individuals don't represent new species. Technically, the hybrids would have to be more widespread and breed amongst themselves to earn that title, but they do signal how flexible breeding dolphins can be, and scientists suggest that this could create similarities in the DNA, because their species only diversified within the last 10 million years. And that's all for today, folks. I've been Alexa, your resident ooky spooky girly. See ya!